You're listening to the Gutsy Podcast, where we talk about all things real, raw, and ridiculous about running a business authentically. Whether you need an inspirational pick me up or a swift kick in the mental ass, the Gutsy Podcast is your bi weekly guide to getting out of your head and back into action. I'm Laura Ora, branding and mindset coach for female entrepreneurs. CEO of Works & Co., and your host on this journey through entrepreneurship. It's time to fuel your gutsy. When you're an entrepreneur, your life impacts your business and your business impacts your life. Whether you like it or not, it does. This can open up the most insanely beautiful opportunities, but it can also be the very reason that you may be struggling to grow or expand. You guys know that I'm all about energy, right? And it's legitimate power. So today we're talking about running a practical and energetic business. And to walk us through getting in touch with your intuitive muscle, I have the most gorgeous, amazing Lindsay Schroeder. Lindsay is a spiritual wellness, intuitive business, and mindset coach with the company she founded, Our and R. She supports solopreneurs develop their intuition, align their mindset, and up-level their lives and businesses. In healing her own life, she found that she longed to share the practices that helped her release her childhood trauma, work through past relationship issues, don't we all have those, good heavens, develop deep self-awareness, self-confidence, and self-love. She is passionate about helping women become conscious creators of the life that they truly desire. I feel like you are already my long lost soul sister. Lindsay, welcome to the Gutsy Podcast. Oh, thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited. Yes, absolutely. So you were just right before we were recording, you were telling me about this um, like magic experience. Do you mind sharing a little bit about what that was? Oh, I'd love to. So I very regularly work with plant medicines, both psilocybin, ayahuasca, combo. And this past weekend, I got to sit and actually lead ceremony for an ayahuasca ceremony. And I mentioned earlier that I just, I feel like I could levitate right now. I'm so aligned and I'm so open. I'm so like just in the midst of downloads. And this is actually the only thing that I planned for today. So I'm really excited to give you guys all of the benefit of this magical retreat that I just came back from. All the literal human magic. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it just, it up and I'm ready to share it. It just, it makes me feel peaceful hearing you talk about the experience. Yeah. So I can't imagine how amazing you're feeling. Yeah. Like buzzing and clear and calm all at the same time. Incredible. So I, I know this is always a big question and this is kind of a twofold, but you know, when did you like how did you get into this work like is this some uh you know energy work abilities is this something you've had all your life and then how did that trans transform into business life definitely so i had quite a few abilities when i was really little and loved it explored it so much and then it became really unsafe to be doing that to have that to know things, to see things. It started to get me into trouble, um, especially with my parents, because I knew stuff about my mom that only my dad knew, and I knew stuff about my dad that only my mom knew, and they got very upset thinking that the other one had told me, like, why are you telling a child these things? Like, why are you doing that? And so it became very unsafe to be so intuitive. So I shut it down for many years. And when I went away to college, and I finally like had space on my own. I really got to like come out of the witchy closet. So <laughs> I had been obsessed with like pagan and Norse and Greek mythology. I like really thought I was a witch for like most of my childhood. I always like collected bottles and potions and was like doing weird rituals, like hidden away from my parents, like at home. And finally, when I went to college, I got to like explore it because no one was there, like checking on me, judging me, like trying to rein me in. I grew up in a pretty religious household. I went to Catholic school until eighth grade and was like regularly kicked out of religion and family life class for like questioning things and stating my opinions. And so I started to find meditation and sound therapy and energy healing and crystals and journaling and breath work and all these beautiful practices when I finally went away to college and I never looked back. 
Wow. And I started doing so much work for myself. And uh, for a long time, I thought it was just going to be for me. Like even when I got my first two Reiki attunements, I remember telling my teacher, oh, I'm only going to get the first two because I don't want to be a master because I never want to like teach or attune anyone else. Like this is just for me. I don't want to like feel the pressure to have to share it or give it or teach. And it was so funny because she like laughed at me almost because she could clearly see that like I was so called to be a teacher and a leader of it. And she was like, that's fine. Like if that's how you feel, like it, it gets to be yours full well knowing that like I had this beautiful path of like leadership coming for me. And she was like, oh, you sweet, naive <laughs> new light worker. <laughs> Yeah, I just, I, I just feel like I see this kind of like side smirk, like, right. okay, like, okay, all right, honey, well, beautiful, whatever you need, whatever you need today is just fine. Right? Beautiful little giggle. And she was like, okay, if that's, if that's your calling, if that's what you feel, do that. And I was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> so then how did this, you know, snowball into, you know, building a business and a community? And like, you know, you said that, you didn't realize that you're being called to be a teacher, but now here you are. So what was that? What was that like? Yeah, I like continue to just like absorb these practices and learn and get like certifications or attunements or this and that for myself. And eventually I left college and got hired at a wellness facility in Chicago to like manage their makeup program, to do some like social media, some buying for them. And they had a healing sanctuary. So I was working with intuitives and energy healers. They had an or therapy machine, a crystal bar. They sold, you know, intuitive guidance guidance card. So I like got even further into a more regimented practice and did more and more for myself. And eventually in working there for so long, we would have healers come and go. It's such a revolving door and a different type of career path that like you typically don't have people who are like working at the same place for an extended period of time and so eventually we like had a an event where we didn't have a healer and they were like oh Lindsay can do card readings oh Lindsay can you know host women's circles or moon circles or she can do aura therapy readings and I just kind of got thrown into it as like oh it's just a little mini thing like it's just an open house oh it's just this monthly event and I started doing it so regularly and building a following and that started to snowball into me making little like prescription recommendations for friends and family and then friends of friends. And I started coaching without really knowing that I was coaching. I was like, oh, well, I've seen this like topic or trauma or situation that you're going through before I've been through it. And like, here's my little prescription meditation and breath work like this and, you know, connect with this mantra and maybe look at this guide and try this. And I started like doing coaching sessions and it started to get more and more formal. And finally I ended up doing a pretty in-depth year long program for an ex partner of mine. And at the end of it, she just looked at me and she was like, this is what you need to be doing. Like, mm. this is, this is your calling. She's like, I've been to therapy. I've been to counselors. I've done this. I've done that. And she's like, nothing has worked and has transformed my life in the way that working with you has. She's like, you need Oof. to give this to other people. And I had been told my entire life, oh, you should have your own business. Like you'd be great at it. You have the personality, you have the mindset, you have the drive, like you'd be so good at it. And I was like, why would I do that? Like I could punch in and punch out for someone else. They could pay me. I could like leave the stress at the door. I was like, why would I take on what my perception was like all this burden, all this liability, all this like, you know, time and energy and focus for like work. And when she said that to me, I just like my body went, I started looking up, how do you open an LLC? How do you do a business bank account? And I just like kept going and never stopped. And like, I had a business within like weeks. Wow. See, I think that's always so interesting. You know, the, the thing that comes the easiest to you, it's just like, oh yeah, just do that thing. And other people are yeah. like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, the, exactly. This is amazing. You should be doing this. You should be helping more people. You could be charging people, you know, like there's just this whole door where you're like, oh, I didn't even realize because it comes so, it's so yes. second nature, right? It's just like, mm -hmm. well, duh, I just do that. You know, it's just my thing, you know, yes. I, but at that point you don't even realize it's your thing. It's just something that you do. Mm. Yes, exactly. 
And I love supporting other women and finding those things of like your business gets to operate in the way that you operate best. Like it doesn't have to look like anyone else's. It doesn't have to be structured like anyone else's. Like you get to take how you naturally operate at your highest level and build your business from that instead of trying to fit yourself into another model. Girl, if we can just put that on every billboard in every county everywhere, (laughs) like that needs to be like screened from the rooftops because, you know, especially it's like anything in business, you know, you you see like how, you know, quote unquote, people do things, right? You do this, then you do that, then you do this. And like, this is just how things go. Well, somewhere in the mix, business gets like clouded in there. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like that happens a lot. And then when you want to go off the beaten path or do it in an unconventional way, then people are like, well, what you doing? (laughs) Like, that's not how to do it. That's weird. Why would you do it like that? Or why would you charge that much? Or, you know, and it gets really clouded. And then it gets you away from just like naturally how you operate, like you just said. And it's like when you spend all this effort trying to fit yourself into something else, like all that effort, you don't get to put towards the things that you love and the things that you're good at. So I'm like, why not build the structure around how you naturally operate so that you can allow your energy and your like efficiency and your natural flow to propel you forward? Yes, I could not agree with you more. So one of the things I was reading that you sent in to me is one of the the lessons that you learned or valuable things that you've learned along your way. And it said your inner reality reflects your outer reality. And how shifting business starts with shifting within. Oh my God. I cannot tell you how many times my clients come to me and they're like, here are my business goals. And I'm like, great. Let's talk about your mom and dad. Let's talk (laughs) about your ex Let's talk about, you know, this thing that you were told by a coach on your dance team in sixth grade. And they're like, no, no, no. But I I just want to hit like, you know, 15 K months. And I'm like, yep. And then we just kind of look at each other and I'm like, it is all intertwined. Like your internal reality is just reflected into your business. And especially when it is your own business, like doing that inner work will create the shifts that allows the outer reality that you're desiring to find you, to be magnetized to you, to materialize. Yes. I found, you know, I went through my own deep, you know, deep spiritual journey of, you know, dealing with and healing those wounds that are, you know, three decades old that you just don't real you just don't realize how they creep up, right? Because, and I definitely want to talk about the subconscious because I know that you're all about that as well. Oh, but yeah. like these habits that you form mm-hmm. that you don't even realize that show up in your business and it's so subconscious that you're like, you have no awareness of it. Yes. So talk to me. Behind those habits. Like yes. what do you believe that has created that habit? How does, how does that play out? So what is like, what do we need to know about that? Right? Like, so how do you build awareness? How do you even know when something is, is stuck that needs healed? I think that's a lot of things. Like people are like, where do I even start? Yeah. So like when I first start talking about this topic with clients or with my community, I usually start at limiting beliefs because limiting beliefs is not as shiny as manifestation or quantum shifting or energetic awareness or meeting your guides. And so that's like what I wrote people in with a lot of times. I'm like, these shiny things attract people, but I'm like, all right, now let's talk about limiting beliefs, like the real foundational work, because you need to be able to identify the limiting beliefs that you have, process them, shift them. And then my favorite that I think a lot of people leave off is reprogram them because the subconscious is running the show so often. So if you're just changing the conscious, you're like butting heads with your subconscious. And like part of you is taking steps backward and part of you is taking steps forward. So I always start with this. When you feel expansive, when you get that idea, when you see something on Instagram and you're like, I could do that, when you get lit up and opened up and then all of a sudden, after you feel expansive, you hear a thought or a belief or that deflating thing that kind of, quote unquote, brings you back to reality. That is a limiting belief. Mm. We should work on that. Oh, well, that is like... (laughs) 
you know? Bing, ding, ding, ding. There it is, ladies. <laughs> like if you've yep. been wondering how to find a limiting belief, there it is. Yep. It's when you feel expansive, what pops the bubble? What brings you back down to earth? Because everything is possible. Like there is someone out there who developed some random little thing and is now a millionaire because of that thing. And there is someone who's doing the thing that you want to do. There's someone who's living the life that like you want to live in pieces. Like, of course, no one's living exactly what it is that we want. But like, if you want to be this level of successful, if you want to have this type of career, if you want to own this type of business, if you want to find this type of partner, if you want to have ABC and XYZ in your home, if you want your family to operate in this way, all of these things are available to us. Everything that you desire is available to you and your desires, they're sacred, they're divine. Like our desires come from within us. It's not just, oh, I saw that on TV and I want it. No, the reason that you desire that is because you are aligned with that thing. Think about all the things that we're exposed to all the time, especially now with the internet and with social media. I mean, we could jump on TikTok right now and see a million things that we could have, be, or do. Which ones light you up? There's something magical about that. And we write these things off so easily and we tell ourselves no, and we limit our own selves. No one else is doing that to us. We're doing that to ourselves. Those are limiting beliefs. Mm, wow. That bubble pop scenario, just, you know, you can really, that's something you can really wrap your face around, right? <laughs> you know, because I think sometimes this, this work seems so ambiguous because yeah. it's, it's not necessarily something you can touch, feel, hold, smell, cuddle, you know, it's, it's kind of in this space above and around us. So that really gives people something like tangible to hold on to or be aware of. Do you have any, do you have any suggestions on building that awareness? Because I think sometimes we run in such an autopilot that you don't even like stop to realize like, oh, you know, I was feeling amazing and I had this really cool idea, but you know, that's, it's probably too crazy. So I'm just not going to do that. Like, how do you build the awareness around that the fact that you're even doing that to yourself? I love to look at all the different pillars of my life. And so for a lot of us, there's, there's similar pillars. Some of us will have more unique ones, but like often it's going to be like love, family, partnership, career, self-love, or, you know, look at the different pillars in your life. Identify what areas of your life are like important or foundational to you. And then ask yourself, what do I want in each of these areas? Start writing that down, voice message that to yourself, and then compare that to what your life looks like. If there are things that you want in certain areas that you don't have, that you aren't, that you're not doing, what's stopping you? And so if you're writing that off as like, oh, when I make this amount of money or when I hit this age or when I retire or when I find that partner, like, are we allowing ourselves to do the things that we want to do to bring us to those places, to have the things that we want to have, to be the things that we want to have? And so just checking in with that, like, when you talk to someone, we're all pretty like confident that we know what we want, but have you really sat down and looked at that in different areas of your life and truly asked yourself, like, am I making decisions? Am I living in a way that's bringing me closer and closer and closer and allowing me to achieve the things that I want? And if not, what am I doing? Why am I not doing that? Why am I not allowing myself to have more and more and more of what I want? Because we get to have it all and we get to have it all right now if we allow ourselves. So that that really checks back to what you were saying earlier about, you know, looking at childhood trauma and past relationships. And I know that you went through a whole journey to do that. What what yeah. was that like? What were you doing? How did that how did that all come about? Oh my God, so much, so much <laughs> inner work. So much inner work. And I that's like why I'm so able to navigate the space with others because I did all of that. I've gone into the deep, dark depths of it. I found what worked for me and what didn't. I've looked at how that appears in the auric field. I've tasted how that energy processes. And now I'm able to hold space and support someone while they're also doing that. So when you say something to me about like, oh, I'm, I'm capped at 10K months, but I really want to get to like 25K and I feel it go off into a section and I see it move in your auric field. And I'm like, all of a sudden I, I see a picture of the word mom, or I get a picture of like a basketball and I'm like, ask them about this thing. And I'm like, tell me about this thing. And then I watch their auric field, like 
react to it. And I'm like, those two things are attached. So yes, it's so easy for us to say like, oh, let's just put some strategy in place. Like, oh, let's just get you a new funnel. Oh, let's just like, you know, up your passive income offerings. Like, oh, let's just do this. Or maybe you need more call to actions. But if you don't believe that you're worthy of having that, if you haven't done the inner work to release that block, if you haven't looked at the fact that like, When you say I'm blocked, I'm capped at 10K and I desire to be at 25K, like you're affirming that block. Mm -hmm. All of those things are intertwined. Wow. What what does doing that work look like to you? Like what are some things that you did as you were going through that experience? Because, you know, childhood trauma is no joke. (laughs) No joke. And that shit will live on and on if we don't do that work. So what is, what does something like that feel like, look like, how long does that type of type of stuff take? You know, I think that these are questions that people are like pondering. Yeah. So I actually built my like flagship digital course is called limiting beliefs. And I detailed out my limiting belief process from how to identify these, how to shift them, how to process them, how to reprogram them. I also did a lot of inner child work. I've done tons of meditation, lots of breath work. And for me, ceremony and ritual has been really important to those factors that like, once I would identify like, oh, this is a block or this is a belief that I have, For instance, I've always been told by both of my parents when I was younger that I was too much. Mm. And so I've been constantly trying to pull myself back, make myself smaller, make myself more palatable. And in this work, allowing myself to step into my priestesshood, my like divinity as a practitioner, as a light worker, it took so much time and energy and effort to allow myself to be my fullest expression. And that was holding me back in business. I was like, oh, I'm going to be the girl who like takes that picture in front of the computer, like typing and writing. And I'm like, that's (laughs) not, that's not me. That's not what I'm offering you when we work together. Like, yes, we're going to talk about those business things. Like, yes, I can talk to you about your funnel or social media or how to like update and align this, but that's not truly the magic. And I was like, why am I hiding behind this? Because other people have built successful businesses in doing that. I'm like, but that's not me. Yes. And that's where that misalignment in business really happens, right? You see what other people are doing and you see, you know, from the front end anyway, because we never really know everyone's yeah. story, but we see on the front end that they are successful because they have, you know, how many hundreds of thousands of followers or they're talking about how many figures they're running and like all this stuff. And you're like, well, if I want that, then I have to do this. Yes. Even at the expense of who I truly am. So that's the, that's the first question of like, in what way am I shifting what I would naturally be doing, what I love, what I like, what I'm good at, staying in my zone of genius, operating in a place that feels really aligned because I feel like I need to like do something specific to receive the thing I want. Oh, if I want to do that, I have to work this amount of time. If I want to have that, I have to do it in this way. If I want what that person has, I have to do it in the way that they're doing it instead of looking inward and going, what is it that I actually want to do? How is it that I actually want to feel. Yes, because it is your business, right? We all started our business probably for very similar reasons, right? To be more of who we are, to have control of our own lives, you know, to have, you know, limitless abundance, whatever, more time, whatever it is, whatever the answer is. But then you get trapped in this, well, I need to do it like everyone else. And then we end up in this rat race of, well, I need to learn how to do business better, right? I need to mm-hmm. learn this strategy better. I need to, I need to do a funnel system. I need to do this. I need to do that in my marketing. And like you you expend yourself. Yes. And I would imagine that you feel the same is the more I found in my journey, the more that I am me, yes. the faster and easier shit happens. Yes. There's no, there's no fighting. Yep. Yeah. No, no yeah. uphill yeah. battle, no like trying to figure it out or having make things work. It's like, it just, business can be easy. (laughs) It took me a long ass time to realize that. Yes, yes, yes. Like you're vectoring your energy in an aligned direction. You're not like leaking energy into different spaces because you have to, or you should. Like you're not pulling yourself in spaces that don't align for you. 
And thus you're able to put your full magnitude towards something and it's always going to manifest easier and more gracefully when you do it that way. I think that the, that uphill battle or climb or the, the, the friction is from going against your natural grain. Like yeah. trying to, it's, it's like trying to force a square peg into a round hole. It just, it's not supposed to go there. <laughs> So we look at our businesses and we go, okay, what feels like that? What things am I doing? What beliefs am I holding? What ways of operating feel like a square peg in a round hole? And then you look at those and go, what would feel better? Like if anything could work, if any choice I made gets to be the right choice, what choice would I make? And then you do that and you allow that to work for you. And it does. It really does. It really what, does. What do you say to people though that are like, I, you know, that just is too scary for me, or that's too unconventional, or that's, I don't know. There's a lot of resistance in that space where it's like, well, I can see it now clearly, option A or option B, but I'm fucking terrified. Yeah. What do you tell them? So two things. It depends on the individual, um, but typically it's one of these two things. I'm like, well, how much resistance are you experiencing right now trying to force yourself to do it the other way? Mm. So I'm like, you're going to feel resistance either way. Why not go in the direction that like you feel most truthfully called towards? Because then when it does open up, it's going to be the way that you want to do it. So for instance, if you don't want to do this specific ABC business thing and you're like, okay. I'm going to put in the work to get through this. But then once you get through it, you're still doing a thing that you don't want to do. You're going (laughs) to do the work. So why not do the work in the direction that you want to be in? So that when it does open up, when you are successful, then you have this practice or you have this structure, you have this system that you feel aligned with. Yes. You're putting in work either way. And you're either going to put in work to repeat the cycle and continue to put in the work or you're going to put in the work to open up like endless everything. Yes. So that's like the first thing that I will often go to when it's about re- the questions about resistance. The second thing is, okay, well, what is the smallest or largest, depending on how the person processes, but like, what is the starting point that you can get your head around? So like, what is the smallest thing that you could start with that you feel a small amount of resistance to, but that you can allow yourself to move forward with? Or like, what is the biggest shift that you're down to try of like, oh, this is scary, but I could, I could do this. I could try that, this little portion of it. I'm like, let's start there. Let's make one shift that moves you into an aligned direction that feels scary, that there feels like resistance around. And then when that works, you'll be down to do another one and another one and another one. You know, I think that brings up something so beautiful and so peaceful is that everyone shifts differently. Yes. You know, just like we're talking with everything else, like not everyone does this the same way. It's not like a formula, (laughs) you know, do this and then that, and then this happens. You know, I love that you're working with people where they're at and knowing their personality and knowing their energies and what they need at that point. You know, I think so many times people are like, oh, I just, I'm not ready to deal with all of that. Well, you don't you don't have to go straight for like the mountain. <laughs> you right. can start with the little like, pieces around it. Let's, let's prep and prepare in different spaces. Let's try this little thing. Let's try that little thing and see what works and then understand how to adapt it for your own energy. Use your own intuition. Like with my limiting beliefs course, it's so funny. Cause like I say it in every module in every section, I'm like, this is my process. This is what I do. Here's the, the path that I took. Now I want you to try this, but then I want you to try this and I want you to try this and I want you to try this. And then I want you to ask yourself, which one of those made sense to me? Which one of those popped off for me? Which one of those was like, Oh no, like that feels <laughs> like, Oh, I want to do it in a different way. What are those intuitive hits that are coming through? Because sometimes this process that I've shown you, it works for a specific topic where you're like, okay, that's my limiting beliefs process for money. But my limiting beliefs process for love is actually like, I rearrange this and I do this first and then I find this thing first. You have to listen to your own self. So as much as I'm teaching you my A to Z limiting beliefs process, the best result from this course is the fact that I'm teaching you to listen to your intuition. And that's where, you know, that's like building a muscle. Yes. You know, I I love that you're 
you're using your platform and your modules and your courses to help people like strengthen that muscle because man, I tell you what, when you start flexing that bad boy, <laughs> it changes. it's, I mean, literally just windows fly mm-hmm. open. Yeah. Completely that fly is my open. Mr. Miyagi magic is like, I brought you in to show you a process to literally give you that formula. And then when you're in there, I'm like, there is no formula. The formula is inside you. Let me <laughs> And by the end of it, you're like, wow, I know how to not only create my own formula, but distill a formula inside myself through myself that works for myself. Oh, such beauty. And gosh, it just, it's, it's life work, right? Like this isn't just, you know, what hot topic that you can do to get more followers on Instagram. (laughs) We're talking about like, this is inner work and inner power that you can use in every aspect of your life for the, for the rest of time. Yes. Cause you're learning a process. You're not just getting one thing. So yes, if you want to go through this practice of like, Oh, I have a limiting belief that has kept me from allowing myself to love and be loved. And it's like, yes, at the end of this course, you can call in that partner. You can a- allow and achieve and have that relationship. But also like then when you realize, oh, I'm also doing this for business. Oh, I'm also doing this for the type of house that I can live in. Oh, I'm also doing this for the family dynamic. Oh, I'm also doing this. Then you get to use that process that you've learned for yourself, the way that it works for you, for anything and everything in your life. Every time that you feel that expansive, oh my God, I would love that. Oh my God, I want that. Ooh, yeah, that feels so good to me. You get to apply this process and just go get it. Go have it. Go be it. Go do it. Hmm. I think it's interesting too, and I definitely want to touch on what what happens in that space where people are like, I get that. I hear you. That sounds amazing. I just don't want to go through all that. Like, I don't want to feel that. I don't want to relive that. I don't want to go through that pain, that hurt again, because that, I mean, the shit hurts, right? Like the stuff that has stuck with you for so long, it's deep and it hurts. What are some of the things that you work with people to, that are in the space of like, I just don't want to feel that again? It's very similar to the resistance question of like, but if you don't work on it, you're just going to keep feeling it. It's just going to keep coming back up. So like, yes, maybe you don't want to deal with that like inner child thing. Maybe you don't want to deal with the way that that felt when that person said that thing to you. But like, we're going to bring it up intentionally instead of it coming up in that meeting in front of your partner with someone when you don't feel safe out in public, when you've already had a really long, difficult day, like, We're giving you your control back. We're embodying your own power. And that space of navigation is so different than just being triggered by it. Yes. Because it allows you to work through and past it so that it no longer, you know, I I also believe that like these things don't just like disappear, right? They, They still, they pop up from time to time. That was something powerful that I learned is, you know, it's not about getting rid of it. It's learning yeah. the tools and how to respond to it versus react to it. Mm-hmm. And so that's part of that lifelong power lesson as well is like you're getting the tools so that you take the power back. Yep. And so that you can choose consciously to respond differently. Yes. And you, you gain lessons from it instead of just the burden of it. Like there are two sides to every coin and we've all been through things. We all carry things, but there are also lessons there. And like the suffering is not necessary, but like we get to keep the lesson and let go of the suffering. Mm. Oh, say that again. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, Keep the lesson. The suffering is not necessary, guys. We can let go of that. We can shift beyond the suffering and integrate the lesson. We can let go of the pain and the hurt and the heaviness and keep the lesson. Gosh, that's beautiful. Oh, I just closed my eyes and just absorbed every word you just said. (laughs) Let's talk about how does it show up in business specifically, since we're talking to female entrepreneurs, these amazing, beautiful rock star ladies, when you don't do the work. How is that shit showing up in their business? Anything that you want that you don't already have, that's it. 
So like, if you want a certain dollar amount, if you want certain type of clients, like anything that is not fully aligned in your business, like, oh, I hit the dollar amount, but the clients are really needy or pushing me beyond my limits or not respecting my boundaries. There's one. If you're not able to hit the abundance that you want, if maybe you're hitting the dollar amount that you want, but it's backbreaking work. It's like, I'm getting up this early and I'm working this much. And I'm like having to like do all of this and this and this, and it's taking away from like other pieces that you wanted that freedom, that flexibility, that time with loved ones, like anything that is not aligned, there's work to be done there. And we get, Mm. we get to shift those things because it gets to be all of the facets not just the dollar, not just the type of clients, not just the flexibility and freedom. You get to have it all if you're ready to do the work to allow it in. Hmm. And that's where the the ease and the peace and the flow and like, I'm telling you guys, like shit will come out of left field and you're going to be like, how in the hell? <laughs> like, where did that come from? It's because you did the work and you allowed it in. Oh my God. My retreat this weekend taught me that in such a deep way, like truer than I've ever understood it before. I'm like every intention that I set, I received and I received in a way that I could have never, if I had written down a hundred, a thousand, a million different ways that it could have come about, none of them would have been even remotely close. And it's in doing the work that you allow and you lean in and you make these intuitive choices that set you up to receive what you've asked for but you have to be willing to allow it in. And the work, this like big bucket of work that we're talking about, whether that's meditation or journaling or personal practice, if that's ceremony, if that's introspection work, if that's NLP or if whatever that work is for you, without doing that, we often block ourselves from receiving the things that we've asked for. They're circling us. They're trying to get to us. They want to align with us. They want to connect with us. Like our desires desire us too. And we are often blocking ourselves from it. You know, that's so true. We, we are often the ones it's, we, we look at circumstances or people or situations as like, Oh, that's the reason. Well, he's the reason she's the reason this person's the reason. Often it's just, it's us. (laughs) And that's a hard pill to swallow, but it's true. Yep. It is the best and the worst. Cause you're like, Oh my God, it's all me. Oh my God. It's all me. (laughs) Oh my God. If it's all me, that means I can shift it. That means I can change it. Yes. I often look at that as like, you know, you're kind of in this fight club mode, right? It's, (laughs) it's having this mental death grip on the way that it always has been or the way that it is, or like, you know, just the debilitating fear that's around it. And when you can, relax your fists a little bit and relax your body and just start allowing Mm -hmm. it pure straight fucking magic like i can't even make this stuff up (laughs) i cannot even make this stuff up that's like gonna be the name of my autobiography there you go (laughs) because like i i can't the serendipitous the psychic moments the intuitive hits the downloads the like the insane things i couldn't i couldn't make it up if i tried you know, I think it's it's interesting too because this this is and when I say this, I mean this type of work, the spiritual healing and, and energy work is for everyone, but there is a large population of people that say that's not for me. <laughs> yeah. And if you if you say that, if you affirm that, if you choose that, then it's not because you just said it's not. But like no one else is keeping you from it. Mm. nothing else is keeping you from it you decided that you're going to keep yourself from it well there's that someone i know someone listening right now just went well fuck right (laughs) you get to decide and whatever you decide is right is true so like if you say oh it's not for me i could never do that then you're right it's not for you you could never do that but if you decide to say well maybe well what if then well maybe then well what if then we try it and then if you say maybe this is for me it gets to be for me i get to do this this gets to work then it does and that leads me perfectly into my next question for you is about vibration there's a a lot of talk right now i think it's really cool that the spiritual aspect the energy work is actually kind of becoming more like you know front line in business at least in the network that i'm in i'm seeing a lot of it 
talk to me about what vibration is and how you guide people through elevating their vibration. So vibration is everything. We are all vibration. Everything that you see around you, everything that you feel around you, everything is vibration from like humans to the the inanimate objects, to the emotions, to the feeling, to the sound, to the music, to the art. Everything is vibration, guys. Like what you think, what you feel, what you believe, what you say, what you do, all of this culminates in your vibration which means that you can change your vibration by changing your thoughts, by changing your emotions, by changing the things that you look at, the things that you tell yourself, the things that you allow to be absorbed in your world. And when we elevate our vibration, when those things that we're thinking and feeling and saying and doing and surrounding ourselves with are happier, more fulfilled, more aligned, more exciting, more expansive, you start vibrating at that frequency. And if you're vibrating at the frequency of fulfilled, of happy, of blissful, of euphoric, of accomplished, of successful, then you magnetize more of those things in because like attracts like. I often look at it like, you know, vibe is a short, you know, shortened version of vibration. But if you've, if you're wondering like, how do I even know if I'm picking up on something? It's like something puts off a vibe. Yes. Right? Like you just walk into a room and something doesn't feel right. Or you look at something and all of a sudden, like every ounce of you starts lighting up like a firework. Okay. Like it's just being, can you tell us a little bit about like being in tune to your body? Like what happens with your body? Think about when you were a kid. So like, think about the thing that you were obsessed with when you were a kid. For me, it was horses. The first time that I saw a horse, my entire everything lit up. <laughs> oh my God. I was like, I started clenching my fists. I wanted to go towards it. It was like pony was my third word. And I like just sat on that word for so long. So consider what it's been like for you in those moments. And like, we can recreate that feeling. So like you get to feel it in the body. What does excitement, what does euphoria feel like to you? So when you get that promotion, when the person that you love comes up behind you and holds you, when your favorite song comes on the radio, when you like flick on the TV and you're like, oh my God, I love that movie and it just started. Like, what do those things feel like? What is that experience? And then we want to have that experience even without that thing all the time. Because if we have that experience in our body, in our brains, in our energy, then we call other things that will make us feel like that in. Mm. And that's shifting your vibration. Yes. I love that you can feel that level of euphoria on a regular basis. I think sometimes, a yeah. lot of times people just kind of assume like, oh, that that's like a once in a while feeling, or that's a you know, when something really cool happens feeling, but you're telling us that could be an everyday feeling. Oh yeah. And I mean, think about that. Like pick one of the most fantastic experiences to you. Like that could be your morning practice. Like, could you imagine waking up and doing a few things and feeling that way? Like the best trip you ever had, the best meal you ever had, the best vacation you ever took, the best day at work, the best presentation. Like you get to choose how to create that vibration. You get to choose what things do that for you. And then you can layer those on top of each other and create that experience for yourself without waiting for an outside stimuli to do that. Mm. You know, as you're saying that, I'm thinking about the trip my husband and I took to Jamaica and we laid in this freaking cabana for like eight and a half hours, literally. Wow. Like we just, and it was just peace and magic and like beauty. And I'm, I'm just sitting here thinking, oh yes, more of that, please. Yeah. <laughs> peace and magic and beauty. Like let's take how we describe this. Let's take how we conceptualize this, how we feel. And then what are the things that make you feel peace? Is that looking at this thing? Is that smelling this essential oil? Is that after 15 minutes of meditation? And then you find a thing that creates that and you're like, okay, magical. What are the things that like make Mm. me feel that way? And you can find things that you can do in your everyday life that bring about that vibration. So these are literally like small shifts that you're making in your, in your day-to-day routine and in your life. Like you're, you're creating this magic, you're creating the peace. Like that's really where, you know, again, taking your power back and and infusing these things into your life to have more of it, which naturally raises your vibration. 
Yes. And then when your vibrations raised, then all of a sudden someone's just reaching out to you, offering you this opportunity that like, oh my God, I really want that. And then you get to say yes to that. And then one of your friends is like, oh, hey, I have an extra ticket to this like thing you really wanted to go to. And you're like, oh my God, that's so amazing. Like, yeah, I definitely want to come. Or you decide like, oh, I really wish I could do that thing. And then, you know what, your business has to get you know, the place that you operate in has to have the vents changed and you get a day off of work so that you can go do that thing right now. Like things just start to serendipitously fall into your lap and align for you. And everything becomes how I describe it as like being in a musical where all of a sudden, like the street parts and people start <laughs> singing and like, oh, someone hands you a coffee for free. And you're just like, yes, like this is my magical, beautiful, peaceful, blissful life. And you can have that right now. Like, yeah. ugh, that's such power, God. I wish you could see the smile on my face right now. Like, just thinking about more women inviting this to be part of their journey. Yes. That I mean, they, like- they can live this truly without any external sources, without, without anyone's, anyone else's validation. Like, yep. you can create this from within. Yes. And like, I am a living testament to it. Like I sit here right now in a beautiful space surrounded by my favorite things. Literally moments ago, petting a cat that I had psychic visions of years ago, surrounded by the absolute, like most aligned love of my entire life, living exactly what I've asked for because I allowed it because I did the work and like went through often sometimes those, those lower vibrations, those heavier things and transmuted and really have learned to embody that I am the conscious creator. And so when I choose something, when I desire something, I get to give that to myself. Mm. Oh, that's a power shift in words. You get to give that to yourself. No more have to, I don't have to do that. I get to do that. No more. I have to do it that way. I have to go there. I ha- no, I get to, I get to, I get to, I choose, I decide, I affirm. Because words are vibration too. Yep. Words are spells. Ooh. Cast your spells intentionally, guys. Words are spells. I've never heard anyone say that before. <laughs> what Cast- you say and what you write, you are casting spells. They wow. are incantations. They are ritual practices. So like, that's why we journal. That's why we speak. That like our communication, they are spells. You are speaking into reality. Like you are taking it from the ether, from the etheric space of like your soul, your spirit, your mind, and you are turning it real into the world. Mm. Unbelievable. I'm actually kind of speechless there for a second. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, just, what spell will I cast right yeah, now? Yeah, I'm like, holy shit, I feel like I've just unlocked a whole nother, like, another realm here. You know, it's, I've never looked at journaling like that before, or even just, you know, I know that words have vibrations, but it's, it goes into the action, right? Which, again, leads me beautifully into my next question is, you know, putting the practical with the energetic. Yes. Because there, there does need to be action, right? Yeah. So, you can't just sit around and think about all these things. There, something does have to happen. The best way that I can explain that is this is the number one like example I give when I'm talking manifestation. So manifestation has typically four main parts. You get clear on what you want. So you decide you want to win the lottery. You're like, yep, I've decided. I want to win li- this lottery, this amount of money. Step two is believing that you can have it. So maybe you do some research. You're like, okay, the lottery is a real thing. Like I see that people have really won this. I see that someone in a similar size town or someone who only bought one ticket. Okay, I believe now that I can have this. Step three, you feel the feeling. So you're like starting to experience what it would feel like. Just like we talked about vibration. Like what would that feel like? Is that magical? Is that peaceful? Is that abundance? And you start to feel those feelings so that you're a vibrational match for it. And step four is inspired action. If you don't buy a ticket, it's not that you can't win the lottery. There's a way, but it's much fucking harder. (laughs) It's much fucking harder to win the lottery if you don't buy a ticket. Yes, you could find one on the ground. Someone could gift it to you in a card, but like, it's much harder. And that's where the action and business comes into play. So when we're talking about practical versus energetic, and you wrote these out beautifully, practical are things like tips, 
techniques and strategy versus the energetic is mindset, manifestation, and energetic match. Yes. So what are, what are some recommendations that you have for women in business? Like what are some pieces that they can look at to, to marry the two of practical and energetic? Ask yourself, what are the practical things? What are the steps? What are the strategies? What are the systems that I have in my business? And am I doing anything energetically for each of those? So for instance, the majority of us, we're posting on social media. Are you doing anything energetically before you create that content, before you create that creative, before that goes out into the world? Are you setting the intention? Are you envisioning that ideal client, reading it, feeling it, being moved by it, using the link in your bio, booking a call with you, purchasing this thing? If you guys are taking technical, practical steps and you're not marrying it with an energetic step, you're missing out. Mm. I love that. It, it's something that I infuse in just about everything that I do, definitely a muscle that had to be built over the years because that also requires you to slow the fuck down. Yeah. When you're in this go, 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 hurry, 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 schedule this, get this done, going to this meeting, blah, blah, blah. You don't, you're not building in the time. Yes. Do you build in like white space for that energy time for your tasks? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So like I'm building in personal practice time. Also, like I don't look at anything as just how long will this take or what time do I need to do the practical thing? They're, they're married. They're inextricable from each other. Like when I'm doing content creation or when I'm recording something or when I'm doing a client session, like the energetics are just an unnecessary vital part and they're always included it's not oh if I have time it's like no I cannot do this thing without both pieces Mm, I choose not to put things out there through my business and often through my own personal life without the marriage of both I don't want to say something without feeling behind it I don't want to write something without feeling behind it like spells our words (laughs) it spells our words everything gets to be a ritual so it's not just getting on this client call it's making sure that I've lit my client candle it's making sure that I pull up you know the overview of what we're covering and that I like read through that and get into that vibration it's telling all my guides like hey guys we're going into a session this is who it's for this is what we're focusing on like I'm ready to be a divine channel for the messages that they need it's making sure that I'm feeling in a great space before getting on that call of like, oh, if I just had something stressful or if I just, you know, ate something and now I'm getting tired, like building in that time so that I can listen to a song or so that I can, you know, do this or do that or feel this or feel that so that I can show up in the vibration that I intend. Mm. And it's, gosh, I love this. It just knowing there's like a whole group of people out there like me. (laughs) You are my, you are my people, seriously. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a game changer, right? And it's, like you said, it's not, you know, if I have time to infuse this in, it's just a natural part of the process. Yeah. And so when you do the work and you build the muscle, it becomes the new subconscious. Yes. Right? Like, I would imagine that you don't even think about like, oh, I need to do these things. It's just like, no, this is just what I do. (laughs) Yes. I experienced this a lot with this podcast, to be totally honest. Like when I first started it, it was like uphill battle, climb, scratch, like hurry up and do this and squeeze this in there and put in too many recordings in one day and set my expectations of myself too high and then completely bomb it. And when I tell you that sometimes, God love my team at that time, we would be in the 11th hour, like an episode needed to go up and it wasn't even recorded yet. And it was, it was such a horrid space to be in. And when I shifted that and I got realistic with myself and I got into alignment and raised my vibration, I'm now recorded six months out (laughs) completely fucking effortlessly. That's the kind of magic we're talking about guys. Yeah. It's like everything gets to change. Everything gets to like be the way that like feels good for you. Yes. There might be someone else out there who's like, oh my God, I love recording my podcast like the day or two before they go up. Like I love being able to share that vibration right after I've witnessed it, but that didn't align for you. So like you get to do it in the way that feels really good for you. 
of like, oh, I love the fact that I have six months ready to go. Like this, I am serving my audience in such like a peaceful way that serves and suits me. I get to see the projection of where we're going and navigate those energies and place things exactly where I want them to be. That's what gets to work for you. And it's not that that's the only way, that's the way for you. Yes. Just because you see how someone does something online doesn't mean that you have to follow suit. Yes. It's just an expander. Everything gets to be an expander for us. So we like try that on and we're like, ooh, what would that feel like? Do I like that? Does that feel good for me? Does that show me that I actually prefer the opposition? Does that show me one little nugget of a piece that I really like? And then I can pick that and then wait for other nuggets to come about or create other nuggets and create exactly what it is that I want. Everything gets to be an expander. Hmm. Amazing. Gosh, I feel like I could just talk to you for days. (laughs) I know that there are a lot of options, right? There's a lot of tools you talked about, um, crystals and Reiki and like all these things. And I'm certain that there's a lot of people thinking, where do I even start? Like, it probably feels maybe overwhelming to think about all of these things. Walk us through some intro steps in getting in tune with your energy. Yes. So let's learn about our energetic body. Let's learn about our chakra system. Let's learn about our auric field. And let's just start to really conceptualize and integrate that we are not just our brains. We are not just our thoughts. We are not just our bodies. We're so much more than that. And once we start in that space, awareness and perception expand accordingly because you are an energetic being. So if you are vibration, we're so much more than just the body than just the brain. And so that is a great place to start of like, do you have a comfort and a connection with each of your seven main chakras? Do you have a comfort and a connection with your auric field? Are you able to receive intuitive messages through this? That moves us directly into my second suggestion. You are intuitive. Everyone is intuitive. Yes, some of us have different levels of this intuition naturally, but everyone is intuitive. So affirm to yourself that you are intuitive start to write your intuitive hits down because it is one thing for you to deny it when you just kind of remember, yeah, I think I thought that, or I think I felt that. But when you write it down, even if that's in like a note in your phone or a Google doc or in your journal, and then that thing comes to fruition or, oh my God, I connect the dots. It is so much harder for you to deny it if you've written it down. Mm, So true. Little, little starter steps that will make a massive difference little bits and that's what it's all about right like it's putting it's taking one step at a time it's you know listening a little bit more a little bit more awareness here a little bit of this there and it's it builds over time because you know when i'm hearing your journey it's been this has been a lifelong journey it's not just something that you did like you know in two weeks (laughs) and you can quantum shift there have been times in my life where i'm like in the course of a weekend, in the course of four hours, I've quantum shifted forward so, so fast, so far, so efficiently, but it is always a journey. There is no destination. So it's not, oh, if I, you know, cram all of this work right here, then I can get where I want to go. Like we're constantly getting where we want to go mm. all the time in all the ways. Tell me about quantum shifting because I'm hearing that a lot. And I would love to learn from your perspective, what that is, what it means, what, what happens yeah. with it. So there are infinite possibilities available to all of us at every moment. There is a vibration or an experience or a reality depending on how you perceive this and integrate this, where you have the thing that you desire, where you are the thing that you desire, where you're being, doing the thing that you're asking for already. And so you can actually quantum shift into that space, into that vibration, into that experience so fast. Like you can literally jump timelines or jump realities and just be that version of you here and now. And so for instance, like one of mine I recently, in that ceremony that I was just in this past weekend, I affirmed, I was like, I am ready to step into my priestesshood. And that could be a practice of six weeks, six months, six years to go from where I was when I set that intention to truly being that version of myself. 
I quantum shifted forward and over the course of a weekend went from affirming that intention, getting very real with myself that I desired that to walking out of that weekend, being that, embodying that. And it is truly like jumping into another timeline. Like you look around and you're like, I am the same person, but I am completely different because Mm. I am now fully embodied in that intention that I set. Wow. Wow. Yes. <laughs> I'm just, just wow. I, I'm, I'm, wow. It's so many wows. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm just uh, picturing you doing this, right? Like I'm picturing yeah. this experience and it, I, I feel like it's probably like an outer body experience because you're like physically here and everything, you know, in the, in the world is the same, but yet you feel like nothing is the same. Yes. Is that, like, is that new safe eyes. to say? Yes. I see with new eyes. I hear with new ears. I touch with new hands. Like everything is new and yet everything is familiar all at the same time. Hmm. Wow. What type of, what type of practices do you do to do that? Cause I feel like people are probably going to be like, okay, that sounds cool. How do I do oh that? <laughs> That's a good question. So if you guys are interested in quantum shifting, I encourage you guys to go to my Instagram, the link in my bio. It's not going to be here for too much longer, but right now I offer a free manifestation ebook that like teaches you the practice and process of manifestation, which is phenomenal. But the second email that you'll get is about the two cup manifestation process. And this is truly one of my favorite one of the easiest, one of the fastest and most accessible ways to quantum leap. And I teach you the full two cup manifestation practice. And you're using water and two cups to jump from your current situation to your desired situation so quickly, so fast. And it is very easy, minimal things that you need. Everybody's got the stuff that like the materials that I tell you about, like everyone has two cups and some water. Like, yes, we do. do this. You can do this. <laughs> it's so easy. It's so fast. It's so beautiful. And like, this is a great space to start your quantum practice in. Beautiful. Guys, run, don't walk. Make sure that you get all of Lindsay's amazingness for sure. And we're, we're going to talk about more about how to get in touch with you. But I want to just kind of open up a space for you because I feel like you've had such a beautiful experience over the weekend. Is there anything else that we haven't talked about or that you want to add on to? What else do you want to share with us? Oh my God. (sighs) All right. There's, there's so many, there's so many, how do I choose? Um, I think one of the grandest realizations, teachings, downloads, it just infinite pieces of magic that this weekend gave me is about sacred reciprocity. I've been working with this plant medicine for quite a while now. And my grand teacher was talking to me this weekend about sacred reciprocity of like, yes, this medicine offers us so much. It gives us so much. What are we giving to it? And as I set the intention to like step into priestesshood, I really like saw it as this sacred interaction. And I was like, yes, of course, I'm, I'm also giving to this medicine, giving to this vibration and giving to this understanding of like, I show up, I do this work, I commit to this, I tell other people and share this with other people. I bring people to this medicine, but like that to me is now the bare minimum. And so I started to ask myself, what is sacred reciprocity with this thing that has changed my life with this energy and essence that has truly like transformed my existence. I'm like, how can I be more of service to you? How can I offer more to you? And really integrating what this reciprocity with life is beyond just with this medicine, but like, in what way are we offering to our lives instead of just receiving from it, taking from it? How are we all showing up as like, Oh, in divine offering and divine receiving in life, in business, in our relationships and our friendships in all spaces for ourselves, for others, for the collective, for the planet, for consciousness in general. Mm, I just see this beautiful circle of life happening. Yes. You know, it's, it's pouring, pouring the cup, filling the cup, pouring the cup, filling the cup in just this most magical of fluid ways. Empty what is full. Fill what is empty. Mm. Incredible. 
I'm so excited that you had this magical experience and that all of us listening and, you know, I feel just so honored to share this space with you. So I'm, I'm super curious what gutsy means to you. Uh, The ability to step into and allow the magic that you desire for yourself like be willing, be ballsy, be gutsy with your life that like you could settle, but you shouldn't. None of us should. We should all just gather a little bit more oomph and be a little bit gutsier, dream bigger, allow more into your life. Like it gets better and better and better and more and more and more magical when you allow it. And I think being gutsy just means exactly that. Be big and bold and unapologetic about what you desire and then receive it. Mm. And knowing that your too muchness is exactly where your fucking magic lives. Yes. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Lindsay, this has been magic beyond words. I want to make sure that everyone knows how to find you, how to interact with you, how to take your courses. So we know about the Instagram bio. Tell us, tell us all the goods. How can we find you? Yeah, definitely connect with me on Instagram, guys. My handle is our and R. So that's O-U-R-A-N-D-A-R-E. My link in bio is a great space to start navigating where you can get that manifestation ebook. You guys can check out some of my mini courses. You can book a discovery call if you're interested in exploring what a one-on-one coaching program would look like with me. You guys can also check out my website to see my full product suite of offerings. That's ourandr.com as well as my private Facebook group. So if you're ready to be in a more intimate setting, in a community of soulpreneurs, of other spiritually curious beings, I have a private Facebook group where I share a ton of magic. I also have a membership. So I would love to invite so many of your listeners in if you're interested in what quote unquote the work is and you would love (laughs) some support in navigating where do I start and what do I try and how do I do this and how do I adapt it and how do I truly flex this intuitive muscle my Instagram into my Facebook group into my membership is a beautiful progression for you guys so definitely come check it out it's all listed in my link in bio perfect and guys we'll make sure that we have all of that amazing information in the show notes so be sure to check that out for sure Lindsay, thank you. This is, um, you know, your, you stepping into your light is casting so much light on so many others. So thank you for the work that you have done and the inspiration that you continue to roll forward. Yeah. Thank you so much. This was magical. I'm so grateful for this experience. Yay. Amazing. Look, ladies, supportive women support women. We lift each other up and look at the fucking magic that happens. (laughs) Also, Be sure to check out this Thursday's Power Back episode. I am going to do my very best. No, actually, I'm going to allow. Let me rephrase that. I am going to fucking allow this magic to continue forward and encouraging you this Thursday to take your power back by playing with your higher self. When's the last time that you just let her speak and tell you what she desires? We're just going to play in that space to allow some of this magic download to continue. In the meantime, head over to lauraora.com where you can sign up for the Power Back course. Guys, if you are ready to step fully into who you are, take your power back in your mindset, take back so much of your time, speak the fuck up when you're ready to, make the money that you're ready to, and embrace your aura and your presence, the Power Back course, I'm going to walk you through every step and how to do that. Get social with me using at that Laura Aura on all the platforms. And as always, until I see you next time, stay gutsy.